something that I've wanted to achieve for a long time in my life. And, you know, uh, being taken out of here at such a young age, and my parents split up, and uh, I was placed in Detroit, Michigan. And so it was a whole different environment to try to adapt to. And my goal was to actually graduate and dominate Michael Jordan someday. <laughs> But you know, as, as life got more and more difficult in the situation in the neighborhood that I was in, my goal was just to reach 21. You know, and I, and I fell short of graduating high school and I pulled myself up and did all kind of odd jobs from restaurants to construction, um, car washer, you guys remember that? <laughs> you know, and I've, you know, I've, uh, just trying to, to make the best of my circumstances and, uh, you know, climb my, pull myself all the way up to the top of the ladder is, you know, achieving my goal as far as my career in music is. Uh, I won on the biggest stage in America that you can win on, winning America's Got Talent, representing the state of West Virginia and all the car washers around the world. <laughs> No, it was just, you know, it was a tough climb, but I got there. But in the back of my mind, I always had that thing that just was, was always that empty space. Like, wow, I wish I could have just got that diploma. And I seen so many people around me that I didn't think would make it out of kindergarten. <laughs> Graduate from high school, and I was just like, wow. If he can do it, I know I can do it. <laughs> if she can do it, why didn't I do it? But we just had different circumstances. And like I said, it was my goal was just reaching 21. Everybody around me at that time throughout the 90s or the late 80s were, you know, being killed from gang violence, drugs, and going to Jackson Prison. By the time I was 17, half of those friends that I had made in the city were either dead or in jail. So I was just, it was just running the gauntlet, just trying to get to school. I mean, my school had a mini police station in it. Detroit mini police station was in my school. I mean, you guys saw the movie Lean On Me, right? Chain the door, chain the doors. That's what they had in my school. Like, we actually had chains on our doors and it wasn't, for us, it was just to keep the drug dealers from coming in our schools. And our principal went through the same thing that old Crazy Joe went through on the movie Lean On Me. Like, I watched all of that in real life, you know, and um, just trying to get through all of that and then make it back home after leaving school. I mean, we had metal detectors, kids was bringing guns and tires to school and fighting constantly. And I always wanted to come back home to West Virginia and, and pursue my education because I wanted to go to Logan High School, which was where my whole family went to school at. But, you know, I, I wasn't able to do that. So, you know, I, I gave up on school and just focused on trying to raise my family and, you know, and better myself in the workforce. And I think I achieved that, but still in the back of my mind, there's that thing that just was missing out all the time. And now I've achieved it. And I thank you all so much for allowing me to do that. You know, they want you to sing a song. You want them to sing a song. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is America's Got Talent winner, right? Yeah, that's hard to do. I mean, um, I'm sorry. Because like, when I sing, I have to have a costume on. It was 10 years ago this month that he won America's Got Talent. Yes, 10 years ago. Yes, 10 years ago yesterday? Yes, yesterday, exactly. Yes, That's crazy. Come on. One song? You used to sing while you worked at Walsh Cars. You weren't even singing. One song. I had headphones so on. I wasn't in front of anybody. <laughs> Nobody, nobody, nobody saw me do that. <laughs> you didn't even see me do that. <laughs> I mean, it's just a whole thing, especially when you're singing like Frank Sinatra. You gotta have, I mean, that suit to me is like me being Clark Kent. <laughs> you know, I just I have a suit to tie on right You guys now. don't care if he has a suit on. Jordan. I got on Jordan. <laughs> 
red and they sparkle too. I don't have on a Ted Baker suit. I don't have. Do you guys care if he has a suit on? No. no. You didn't audition in a suit. Oh. oh. I had half a suit on. Oh. At least had on a jacket. And you know why I had that on? Do you really know what I had that on? Had you trained on it? No. Uh, I actually got robbed before I went on America's Got Talent. Somebody went to my house and stole all the cop right on my walls, all of my clothes and everything. So when I got to New York to do my audition, all I had on was a jogging suit. And I was like, I can't do this in a jogging suit. But I also had this corduroy jacket that I bought from, a, I think it was a store called Burks. <laughs> Burks Outlet. Burks Outlet, they sold me a, a corduroy jacket for like a hundred dollars and I took that to New York and I was like okay I don't know what else I'm gonna wear with it but I'll find some when I get there. Saved up all my car wash money, went there, I bought a pair of 501 Levi's and some PF flyers and I had this button up rockerwear shirt that I had I don't know I guess I don't know why they didn't steal that too. I had that and and it had like these things, I guess, for cufflinks, but I didn't own a pair of cufflinks. So I took it, put my jacket over it, folded the, the, you know, the cuffs over the jacket, and I went out there like that. And you know, and it just it changed my life. And actually, the whole gum situation was just me being so scared. I was so nervous. I had never done nothing like that, and and I was just like, man, I'm gonna chew this gum and. Hope for the best. <laughs> and when I went out there, I still had the gum in my mouth. And I had seen a garbage can to spit it out, but I totally forgot about that after I talked to Nick Cannon. <laughs> and I walked straight out on the stage, chewing this gum, and, the, and everybody's like, hey, you gotta talk to Nick first. And I was like, oh, I already talked to him backstage, but I'll do it again. So I go back and I shake Nick Cannon's hand. And that's when you see me, see me go, hey, what's up, Nick? And I shake his hand, but I was actually coming back to talk to him. And then he told me, you ready to do your thing? And I was like, yeah, he pat me on the back and I still forget to spit the gum out by the garbage can. <laughs> and I'm out there on the stage. And even at the time I had a partial in my mouth, so the gum was like kind of helping me keep that partial in my mouth. <laughs> you know, cause like I could have been like, I did it more. <laughs> you know, out and all y'all be like, oh no, not again. You know, so it was just a combination of all those things. My emotions are high, my palms are sweaty, my, I got huge moths, not butterflies in my stomach. I have moths in my stomach. I'm so scared. I'm like, I'm representing the state of West Virginia. We already get stereotyped, as we all know, right? And I was just like, I have to do this to the best of my ability and, and think of all my people back home. And, and when I went out there, I was so nervous, I started chewing that gum instead of just holding it in place. I started chewing it. And Pierce Morgan was like, are you chewing gum? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, I am. You want me to take it out? He was like, I wouldn't do that if I <laughs> And so I took it out and stuck it in my pocket. <laughs> I didn't even think it, but in my mind, I swear I was like, boom. <laughs> and then I thought, like, oh my God, West Virginia would be mad at me again if I did that. that so in my mind, I really chucked it off, like, <laughs> I stuck it in my pocket. And I actually had a $10 bill in my pocket, and it stuck in between the $10 bill. I still had that $10 bill with the gum in it now. Those jeans, that jacket. I have that shirt. I don't have a PF flyer. I think somebody took took those. I'm not sure, but uh, still got that singing voice. Oh yeah. I still have the voice. Yeah. 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 I'll make it happen. What do you want? What do you want? Can you pull a, the CD out of your jacket or a track? Or we have any musicians here? Anybody play instruments? Anybody play instruments? Need a band? Band. <laughs> you play a radio? You got a ukulele? Look, if I could round up some musicians, would you sing a song for these guys? Yeah, I'll sing a song. 
But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Well, funny you should mention that, Randolph, because for these folks, I bet we could round up some musicians. Anybody out there? Anybody play drums, guitar, trumpet? Anybody? She raised her hand. She does. She raised her hand. We're going to put you to work because. What we'll do is we'll we'll put you on the tour bus. We could do it off a poco. It leaves at four in the morning. Wait. Wait a